Justice Flora Azigeton talk say he no go collect bribe from the Kanu State National House of Assembly Election Petition Tribunal. My people, hey, my, the, the, in fact, eh, this whole thing, eh, you don't crystal clear, say, man, that they delay this judgment based on the fact, see, they want me to settle this bribe finally. But this woman, she truthfully come and say, she not the empathy of any bribe whatsoever. Say she not the collect bribe from anybody. Hey. No wonder they conspire together. When they talk, say all the big boards, when they bring comments about um, all eyes on the judiciary. Say, eh, now intimidation to the judiciary. You're not supposed to be like that. Say, ah, um, say now infringement on their rights. They, they intimidate the judiciary. Okay. Now all this ones, when I do, we be saying, I'm not do where. When I want the bread judiciary for back, no matter they delay the verdict. Nigerians go, eh? They don't know all my secret. My people, all those news now bring together people must get their money nigerians must get their money the person who will vote for the food will buy for market they must give us <laughs> the one who will not buy when in fact we go throw away and they say can i go we don't want to go throw away for his IPT. in fact eh, they don't talk can they don't that profess me i all and go 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 whether the person like it, not talk name more we already know that they talk to in fact eh, anybody with us in nigeria no go get peace the poor no go breathe as far as say, the person by mistake talk can Say, let the poor breathe in the name of Jesus. That poor go breathe. The poor must breathe. Anything you want to make the poor breathe, eh? Anybody way they behind them. Hey, in fact, me, I say amen to that prophecy. You. It's in an heart attack. Hey, hey, hallelujah. My people. We can let the video play. I want to watch this video from the beginning to the end. I share, like, subscribe. So I be all the TV, but we only bring all trends together, my people. Area, I allow now. Oh, yeah. Take one uh, reaction from. Uh that's been trending on WhatsApp. This person says, full tank in May, 2023, 15K. Full tank in June, 2023, 35K. Full tank in July, 2023, 55K. Same year, same car, same tank, same filling station, same country, same people. And the last but not the least, same salary. Mm. I mean, you, on, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are still protesting that by August it ought to be sixty something thousand. Uh, no, no, it's, no, not, no. it's not high enough. This Ayo, is... the fuel price is not high enough, Doctor Abati. Market fundamental, market forces must take over. This fifty-five k OG is not high enough. Fuel should be so at seven twenty. Market this forces so should take over. Don't kill Nigerians. Don't kill Nigerians. Yeah. Don't kill and Nigerians. The truth. Please. It, it, Don't kill Nigerians. Funny Let's, enough, I, economics means sense. Yeah. If economics is not benefiting the grassroots yeah. people, any economics is senseless. Mm. Funny enough, enough. Enough. Driving to work this morning mm. just occurred to me that all nine, most Nigerians are poorer. Yeah. Because yes, even no. if you're on the same salary, you've got an increment in your salary, please don't mm. rejoice too much because perhaps they just made you match up to what you Small. were earning mm. before. Yes. Or perhaps even lower than what you were earning before because the prices don't add up. Yes. And the pressure is on um, employers. They also cannot afford to increase salary. So we are all managing, trying to cut things. And our resilience sometimes do not even make us understand just how much we have reduced our quality of life in terms of our spending. Yeah. These are we keep managing, we keep cutting down, we keep cutting costs, but Nigerians are poorer. Something's got to give, and I know, I mean, like you said, something is back. But there's another topic, all eyes on the judiciary, which is really what's trending. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the removal of billboards, promoting the words, all eyes on the judiciary across the country. Over the weekend, the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria ordered the removal of the billboards and dissolved its advertising standards panel by approving the ads sponsored by a group known as the Diaspora for Good Governance. The ads were put up as the presidential election tribunal prepares to deliver its verdict on the petitions challenging the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Frank Shwaibu, an aide on communication to former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, said the removal of the billboards across the country is an assault on freedom of speech. I mean, he's not the only one, Dr. Abati, saying that this is an assault, but let me just take some parts of that uh, uh, statement from Arkon. They wrote, the advertisement is controversial and capable of instigating public unrest and breach of public peace further stating that the advertisement is considered a blackmail against the Nigerian judiciary 
the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, and particularly the Honorable Justices of the Tribunal who are expected to discharge their judicial functions without fear or favor over a matter that is currently due spenders. I mean, Dr. Abati, you are the law okay. student here. Okay, uh, two sides to this story. Yesterday when that, broke, uh, that yeah. story broke, it was said that Chinobu had dissolved the uh, board of uh, ACON, or is mm. it the Advertising Standards uh, Panel? Mm. I thought that, you know, appeared very strange mm. because that would be a draconian way to intervene in the operations of a body established by statutes. But by the end of the day, mm. the um, Advertising Regulatory uh, Council of Nigeria itself came forward and took ownership of it and said in a statement signed by the Director General that it was ACON that suspended the directors, the persons in charge of the advertise, advertising standards mm. panel. And that's the statement yes. we have on the, on, the, on the board there. And they said, you know, there was no vetting uh, and that there was no approval by the uh, council. And that the council, it was that directed that the materials should be pulled down immediately and that the directors in charge uh, should go on suspension. What are the arguments that the uh, ACON was putting forward? That the uh, advertisement uh, said to have been put together by a group of persons in the diaspora uh, was addressing a matter that is pending, just pending, it is called, before uh, the uh, presidential election petition tribunal, and that it will be prejudicial, and that it is uh, capable of causing disaffection, resulting, you know, uh, uh, in bringing the uh, the Judex into disrespute, into uh, uh, defamation in the right, in the eyes of the right thinking members of society. That's a technical expression. And then so the Akon took ownership of it. The other side of the argument, which I said I was worried about when it was said, it was said the presidency uh, that took a decision, is about the right to free speech. Okay? Uh, people can say all lies are on the judiciary, they can go and put it there. So I thought, how would the Tinubu administration politicize this? But they have been pushed out of it. Akon has taken responsibility as a body established by law. However, the other side of it is that, look, the judiciary has been under fire. Everybody has been saying the judiciary, all eyes are on the judiciary. But within the context of where the uh, presidential election petitions are now, where final written ad addresses have been uh, adopted. The concern, you know, is that attempts have been made from different directions to put pressure on their lordships. And that would be contemptuous to do so. Yeah. Contempt in face of court or contempt away from the face of, of the court, which is called contempt ex fasciculia. In which category will fall the allegation by Baba Tunde Fashola ISAN, that some people were saying, oh, he was writing a uh, 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 judgment mm. for the presidential yes. election petition tribunal. That's true. But the truth that we all know is that Nigerians are all anxious about the outcome of that presidential election petition tribunal. That is the point. And what will come out of the 180 days process prescribed in the Constitution for the determination of petitions arising from the presidential election, uh, uh, election process. So that is why this takes on a fresh significance. And people are saying, oh, if you are pulling down the, the b-board, OK, all of us have been saying it now, that the judges must do their job Absolutely. without fear or favor, Absolutely. without, you, no matter whose ox is God. That's the received wisdom 100%. there. You know, so it's a, it's a two-way thing. Akon can hide under the fact that, well, is the regulatory authority, but it is ACON acting under pressure. Did anybody push ACON to come out with this statement? Is ACON statement a cover-up as a result of pressure from certain interested parties? Those are very valid. But as for the statement, yes, the judiciary is under pressure. After all, the recent, uh, uh, you know, uh, MBA Spidel uh, conference, the whole issue was about the role of the judiciary and the role of lawyers who uh, are forum shopping and uh, 
you know, misbehaving contrary to the rules of conduct, you know, in this entire process. Yeah, so right. as a statement, not many people will quarrel with it. So the question, the relevant questions to raise is, is Akon acting truthfully? Was Akon pushed? And why? Right. Because this will not even stop people from saying all eyes are on the judiciary. Oh, it's yes. been trending Certainly for all months. eyes are on the judiciary. That's the hashtag but, trending. But the, but the judex should mm. also not be intimidated. All right. Yeah. Because yeah. that will be contentious. Yeah. That's for she Korea. Awesome. Yeah. Good questions raised. We'll take another story. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has mourned the death of the Nigerian Air Force officers who died in the helicopter crash in Niger State on Monday. The NAF helicopter crashed while on a casualty evacuation mission near Chukuba village in Shiroro local government area of the state. Tinubu in a statement posted on X said the news of the helicopter crash and the loss of the officers brought him immense sadness, adding that Nigerians will forever remember the officers as national heroes. Let me take a part of his tweet. Tinubu wrote, these officers and men were answering the call of duty while on evacuation mission in their dedicated service to our beloved country. They paid the ultimate price. In the meantime, the governor of Niger State, Mohamed Umaru Bago, has blamed illegal miners and Fulani herdsmen for the increase in spate of banditry in the state. The governor made the comment when he paid a condolence visit to the chief of air staff following the death of Nigerian Air Force personnel who were on a mission in Niger State. Yeah, a lot of uh, uh, activities of illegal mining, you know, we have a lot of lithium and gold and uh, this is not far away from that because uh, these miscreants uh, are into this illegal activity so they've taken uh, siege of that place. Over the years we've been trying to talk to them and that uh, there's a symbiotic relationship between the Fulani headsmen and the miners, you know, because they use uh, these uh, cattle to transship whatever they have mined. You know, that is why you see the symbiotic relationship. Well, all right. The um, governor is uh, blaming illegal miners as well as uh, herders for <laughs> these attacks. I mean, there were attacks that occurred uh, over the weekend as well. I don't know if I sent you that video also of one boy that was cut with the cut. It was horrific to see. But I mean, this is what they are saying that is happening. But I mean, there's also a video trending online right now. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you have seen it. Terrorists yeah. claiming that they were they, 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 responsible they, they, they. Yeah. for shooting down the yeah. NAF plane. We've heard these stories. I mean, so uh, the guy that's threatening, that's uh, claiming he was responsible, is a known terrorist, a uh, uh, bandit or terrorist. Yeah, anybody that terrorizes people. They're all terrorists. They're all terrorists. You all know. of them. Dogo I Kide. don't use bandit anymore. he has said he did it. Anyway, there's been a lot of other rebuttals by saying, no, oh, the plane just, you know, crashed and all of that. He didn't do it. Now the governor is blaming illegal miners. The question is, who are we to believe in all of this? But whatever is going on with this story, we have problems in our country, Oji. We have a war going on that our planes are being affected and they are coming down. And the leadership newspaper did a, a story this morning, I think the first two, three pages, and it talked about the fact that I think in the past eight years, we've had about 18 of our planes come down one way or the other. Our birds are coming down, our military planes. Right. And this is very sad. And we must also look deeply into this as we give commiserations, you know, to those that have lost their life. And it's quite a very sad day. It is. 22 soldier, uh, soldiers was first attacked and killed. This uh, wreath of some sort to go evacuate them got in there, was also attacked. Bandits claiming they did it. If you remember, another case in point was that case where we're lucky in that case because the, the pilot ejected and he ran to safety. You remember the case of that pilot? where some bandits claimed that they shot that down. So increasingly, we are having people with capability to be able to shoot down or heli attack helicopters down and things like that. And these were not just ordinary helicopters. They were attack helicopters. You know, if they could shoot that down with that capacity, we have a lot of problem in our backyard. And we are so concerned about Niger, where we have problems in Niger. Mm -hmm. And it's not only in Niger. Couple with this, see what is happening in Plateau, Oji. Yes, Killings have resumed in died. Plateau. Yes. That and is also know, happening. You know that they, they did launch that operation, Tiger Teeth. I mean, to go into Play Two State yes. in particular, because like I told you guys before, I did some research and I found over 350 yes. 
Nigerians have died in play too. And, state and, and for let, what? And let me even shock you. The effect on inflation in three is months. the fact this that three you are seeing areas like Berkeley mm -hmm. affected the Bangu local government area. Bangu has the second largest production capacity for Irish potatoes. Mm -hmm. The farmers can't go to farms any longer. So most of the northern part of the country is sort of like an axis of evil now. Bandits, insurgents, Boko Haram, name it. All sorts of groups marooning through our bushes, attacking people, massive insecurity. Amidst all of this, we think that foreign investors are going to bring their money. So these are the problems, and that's what we should solve. But my heart goes out to the military Absolutely. out there. Commiserations, they've suffered a lot of bad training. We are with you, the Nigerian military, as you go through this very sad one. Because those 22 people that died, they also have families. They had dreams. Mm -hmm. They love Nigeria just like all of us. Absolutely. And they pay the supreme price serving our country. But we must look inward and fix our problems. Yes. This problem's about it. Our heart goes out to the military and to the victims, the family of the victims who died. We'll take another story. The immediate former governor of River State, Yesam Wike on Tuesday, set up some controversy after photos of his visit to the new national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Ganduje, began circulating online. Wike was received by Ganduje at his residence in the federal capital territory, Abuja. The All Progressives Congress, in a post on X, stated that the former governor's visit to the APC national chairman was to congratulate him on his election to the position. Wike was confirmed as a minister of the Federal Republic on July 31st, a move many have described as an anti-party action by the former governor. Well, let's take some tweets on X. Here's some Wike's recent meeting with APC National Chairman Dr. Abdullahi Ganduje is raising concerns about party discipline. It is advisable for the PDP to go ahead to suspend Wike and his associates Given the apparent disregard he has displayed for the PDP and its leadership, he has spat on the PDP's grave, and INEC should consider deregistering the party. Well, Shewu wrote, politics can be astonishing at times, especially when you remember the things that Wike has said about Ganduje. Let us not engage in internal conflicts over politicians. Instead, let us direct our energy towards holding politicians accountable. Unity among ourselves is crucial. We must stand together against the politicians, not against each other. Ayo, you saw these photos trending. Oh, well obviously. said, Sammy. Well said. <laughs> Sammy did well. This, um, this um, governor, yes, so former governor, yes, on yeah. Wiki's story has to be written into a book. He must yeah. go into the annals of history of, our, of, of Nigerian political space. Yes. How a frontliner in terms of a, a big political party like the PDP is obviously not just flirting with the opposition, but actually in bed, not even being caught, but promoting it, sponsoring it himself in terms of just showing. And as was said, right from the time of the G5, when he was the hour head of that particular group, and they actually took on responsibility, and they were proud enough to say that they gave, um, they were able to let the opposition win in certain states. And yet people have continuously wondered as to PDP silence. What does, you know, uh, governor, former Governor Yeson Wiki have Against, against the PDP, what hold, what power that the obvious anti-party, well, even the ones advising the PDP <laughs> to say that this is anti-party activity, Absolutely. discipline him. This, at what point? I'm not surprised at this. He's already, in effect, taken on a ministerial um, position, yeah. accepted, and gone before the House, a pallid with, So this is not a surprise to me. He has just gone to congratulate his party chairman. Yes. So this, he goes and... To congratulate history, yes, his party chairman. As being a member of two parties simultaneously, PDP, and the, even though he hasn't declared that he's leaving the PDP, to join the APC, but his body language, I don't know if, how that works in terms of their constitution, the PDP constitution, if this is allowed, but it is a very curious case. In fact, I have a suggestion for the, the curious case of Yes on Wiki and the PDP. <laughs> I hope that Benjamin PDP... <laughs> I hope that the PDP would speak, because if this, if this isn't handled properly, it will not serve as a deterrent to other politicians within the PDP, mm -hmm. and it just positions them as quite weak in terms of handling their internal affairs. And finally, just to emphasize the point that 
at the end of the day, do not kill yourself in the wars of politics, of politics and politicians. APC and PDP, we see how they are cross-partying here and there, and sometimes, as we see, in the same party at the same time, or representing same interests at the same time. Yes. We must focus on the people, we must focus on interests, and not get involved in other people's war, especially politicians and political figures. Well said, Ayo. You know, Sally's tweet was quite apt. I mean, considering yes, the was. things that VK has said about Ganduje, leads me to my next story about character and behavior. Senate President. Godswill Akbabi on Tuesday at the National Policy Dialogue on Corruption, Social Norms and Behavior Change in Nigeria said behavioral change could be Nigeria's single biggest instrument in addressing corruption and the destruction of social norms in the country. Akbabi was represented at the event by his deputy chief of staff. The dialogue was organized by the Independent Corrupt Practices and other related offenses commission. I mean, this story was quite, quite funny because everyone was talking about, uh, I mean, how can Akbabio say this at this time? But, you know, talking about uh, behavioral change, let's take a look at this video of a car. Spotted driving with only three tires <laughs> along the Shagamu Expressway in Ogun Jesus State. Christ. We have a lot of criminals. Ah. This is a car <laughs> in my front now. Eh? Tire in your can't find it. We all we love to risk our life in this part of the world. Can you see? Road safety, Ogun State or Lagos State. Lagos State, number. State, ah. State number. Lagos State, the number. AA 078. AA 07. 07. AG. AG. Lagos. Lagos, that's the number. Wait for overtake. Wait for overtake. Wait for overtake. Can we call this madness or what? <laughs> Dr. Bati, over to you. Well, that guy called him a criminal. I, I, I Complete I mean, it sounds, it's not funny at all, actually. Uh, I, mean, I thought it was uh, plenty, is... plenty the elder uh, uh, who said uh, something new yes. always comes out of Africa. Africa. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, members of the international community, if they were to see this, they will be wondering how can a three legged uh, uh, vehicle move contrary to unknown uh, concepts of engineering about balance and velocity but in nigeria something new always uh, comes out uh, particularly <laughs> haven't you seen people you know ferrying uh, a whole cow on the back of an okada and there will also be an a, a, it will also be a human being you know on top of that um, uh, motorcycle just a clear sign yeah. of uh, underdevelopment as we have seen it now, earlier on, you were talking about uh, Wiki visiting uh, Ganduji. Well, Wiki appointed, nominated to be a minister in an APC government. Well, he will have to work with the party. Okay. He has not publicly declared that uh, he's leaving the PDP. And the PDP has said they are just waiting for him to take the appointment before they then take a decision. So. There is, no, there is nothing uh, strange in uh, Wiki visiting Ganduje, the chairman of the party, the ruling party that he's going to work with. Okay? The only uh, question that you can uh, underline for the benefit of our audience is the Faro Timmy's uh, standard argument. Do not die in their war. Absolutely not. That's what I just said. That's the title <laughs> Absolutely of the book. Absolutely not. Dele Timmy, do not die in their war. Yeah. When you see politicians agreeing, the same politicians will come back to you and say, then in politics, you agree to disagree, you disagree to agree. Yeah. This is a classic illustration of it. Finally, uh, the Akbabi, Senate president, Akbabi, yeah. uh, Gosfil Akbabio, yeah. was said to have been represented at a national policy dialogue on social norms mm -hmm. and behavioral change. And he made, his representative made a number of points. Now we can tackle corruption through behavioral change. Yes. Two, that we need to uh, develop a culture of teaching ethics right, and integrity at all levels through awareness campaigns and uh, educational institutions. Unfortunately, the National Orientation Agency is practically dead. It's ineffectual. Number three, he says under his watch is uh, the 10th National Assembly will put measures in place to fight corruption. Yeah. Now, all those three points he has made, they are valid points. Yeah. They are reasonable points. They are at the level of theory, reasonable. <laughs> After all, we were in this country when 
Uh, somebody said, change begins with you. Yeah. That is it. I mean, it's yeah. not in the same point. country. Under yeah. the Buhari government. Yeah. The Buhari people, we, the change did not start with them. We did not see any change. So the question Nigerians will ask is that, if you want change at the level of corruption and all that, let our leaders That's it. lead the way. Well yeah. said. Show the people the light. Yes. And the people will follow. To well quote uh, Inamdi Azikwe's uh, <laughs> motto All in right. his newspaper, West African Pilot, 1947. Well said, Dr. Abati. Uh, well, I, I, I think we have to, to just quickly go. In yeah. all honesty, there's actually a car that drives on three wheels around the world. It's called <laughs> the Citroen DS. But well, that's not what we are talking popular. about. Yeah, Thank I you mean, very much, Rufai. I, I just wanted to start cheating. Honorable Justice Flora Ngozi Azinge of the Kanu State National and State Assembly Elections Petition Tribunal revealed that a lawyer was trying to bribe her so that she would deliver justice in their favor. She condemned the action of the lawyers who go to the press to condemn judges that they take bribes, but they are the ones that always flash money in front of judges to bribe them. She said that she has a roof over her head that no one should try to bribe her. One of the lawyers present in the courtroom where she made the revelation stood up and urged her to reveal the name of the lawyer in question. He cited a bribery situation in the past where they turned the case around and said that it was the judge that demanded the bribe. The Honorable Justice is the true reflection of what a judge should be. She should have gone further to name the SAN involved. Such a person should be derobed. He should not be on the bar. These are individuals who go around bribing judges and buying judgments. That's why when you listen to some of their laughable arguments in court, you'll be wondering which law school did this one attend? Who gave this one SAN? How can a lawyer argue that it was Tinubu's account that committed a crime, not him? How laughable! When the court that tried him in Chicago listed his name as a defendant, not the bank account. Is bank account human? Can a bank account commit crime? Can it remit money to another account? They make a mockery of the legal profession. They even go as far as outright lying in court, bringing fake witnesses. Just like what happened in Enugu Governorship Election Petition Tribunal. The PDP candidate and his lawyers brought a fake witness who claimed to be a staff of the SSS. Not just that the witness lied under oath, also, he came to do a laughable job. How can he come to counter the NYSC? The NYSC is the only body that can prove if a discharge certificate is fake or not. But these people blatantly lied in court and tried to disprove the NYSC. You can imagine the impunity, the level these people can go. So it's obvious they are all banking on passing the buck under the table so that they can buy the judgment in their favor. Corrupt politicians who can win elections seek corrupt lawyers who now seek corrupt judges to buy justice in their favor. And when such a politician passes all these processes in order to get to office, you think he will care about anyone. No, no, no. He knows where his loyalty is. When he's contesting for an election, he knows he has to keep money to go to court. They will steal the election, take that money and buy the judgment, and that's the end. That's why nothing good will ever come from such a politician. Just like what is going on in the country today. Them they play our economy like Ludo, trial and error. Remove fuel subsidy today. Flow the Naira today. Tomorrow, consider returning petrol subsidy. Consider unfloating the Naira. People who claim to know everything. Well, he said, na statistics will go chop. I think na statistics will go chop. We've seen, this is practical, that they don't know anything. They are empty. They can't handle economy. They can't handle insecurity. Look at what happened in Niger. How many casualties? So the issue is not saying, it's my turn. Can you do the job? That's the most important thing. Even an ordinary security man, manning a gate in a compound, if you cannot man that gate and prevent people from entering anyhow, or God will sack you from the job. So what are we talking about? When people come to office through the back door, that's what you get. You can't see competent people trying to bribe their way to office or trying to bribe a judge when the person knows, hey, I want this. Why do I need to bribe someone? Do the right thing. That's the most important thing. 
If we cannot do the right thing in our country, then there's no hope. Now, let's give you an update on the presidential election petition tribunal. Many have been asking what is taking time? When is the judgment day? Why are the judges taking all this long? Is there anything we need to know? Is something passing under the table? You can't blame Nigerians for their lack of trust in the judiciary. A lot of instances are bound where they turn justice on its head like the one of Lawan and Ababio, where they didn't contest primaries, but they ended up winning the elections, which is against the law anyway. And the one already said in this video, where a lawyer tried to bribe an honorable justice. So they have the right to think that something else might be going on. But the truth is, the massive evidence before the election petition tribunal judges is so massive that this is not something that they can just stand up and decide. Deliberations are not easy. And remember that there's a lot of questions that they need to answer. In fact, if we go through all the judges have to answer, that means it might be up to 50 questions. Was the non-compliance substantial to the extent that it affected the outcome of the election? What about the 25%? They need to answer that question, despite there being a judicial precedent. So there are a lot of things they need to do. The work is enormous on them, but they still have time. The 180 days to determine the petition will expire by second week of September. So they've not crossed that line. There's no need to be anxious. We need to keep an open mind. They will do justice to the petition. There's a lot of work they will need to do. Let's keep hope alive. Forget about the rumors flying around. Yes, sometimes rumors have some element of truth in them, but just treat them as rumors. Another thing to know is that the judges are under serious pressure. Not just the judges at the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, but all judges handling all election petitions across the country. If a National Assembly candidate or State Assembly candidate is willing to bribe a judge, how much more a presidential candidate? So it's obvious that under intense pressure, let's just keep hope alive with open mind till they deliver the judgment, like already said in many videos. With all the baggage Tinubu is facing, it will take a rewriting of the constitution, of the laws, to exonerate him. Yes, that's how difficult it is to save him. The worst outcome from the presidential election petition tribunal would be a rerun election, which wouldn't still be fair to Nigerians, because before the judges would determine that the election was flawed in order to declare a rerun, they must have seen what APC and INEC did, and who benefited from what they did. It is APC that benefited because they are the ones in power right now. So allowing them to participate in a rerun election will be a disservice to Nigerians. Also, it will be like rewarding someone who committed a crime. They rigged the election and benefited. Uh, Nigeria on the Tinubu has been a, a challenging one. Did you expect this? Thank you. Well, say it again. You know, I, I'm looking at some of the key things the president is dealing with. For instance, subsidy removal, which uh, is still a big pain uh, in the lives of Nigerians. Did you see this coming? Well, thank you very much. Um, I must confess that uh, this oil subsidy has been a problem in this country for years. And that uh, I remember in 2012 when the President Jonathan removed the subsidy, there was hue and cry. Put his government down, pull it down. And uh, Nigerian leaders, particularly those who are now in the President APC, gathered every money, every day. In the Kaja, where they even fed the demonstrators, kicking against uh, what Jonathan had done. And the protest was so much that President Jonathan was forced to review what he had done. Then it was the uh, one of the principal area of campaign against Jonathan by the APC in the 2015 general election. They said that um, 
Subsidy was a scam. But who were surprised when the new government of President Buhari took over? He started to operate the country, the, this particular area of subsidy, as if it was secret between him and the Minister of, uh, uh, Minister of Finance. They were paying so much money, unknown to Nigerians, and so at a certain time they said their subsidy had been abolished. Subsidy had been abolished. And to that extent, I do not think there was provision for it in the 2021 budget. But for Rit to reappear and say, say, postpone it until the new government takes over. So they were postponing the evil day. And they did this until the elections were held. No provision was made for subsidy after June 2023. So everybody was waiting. But thank God, when the president took over, he had now the, 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 the withdrawal of subsidy, the cancellation of subsidy, to the joy of every Nigerian. But many of us thought that uh, for the president, after the election, to have spent one month outside Nigeria, particularly in Paris or in London, I cannot say, one would have expected that he will prepare what he will do immediately the subsidy was removed. So what happened? It was just like putting the cart before the horse. I think that's the problem we are facing today. Otherwise, it was a good decision applauded by all Nigerians. I was asking, listening to you, uh, taking us down history lane, uh, do you think the present administration or the country uh, or President Jonathan an apology? Well, I wouldn't say they owe him an apology. They were playing politics. They played politics with it. They knew that there was no need to have what you call oil subsidy when nobody knows the quantity of oil being consumed in this country. We don't know how many uh, vehicles are in this country. Sometimes people will say 40, 60, and so forth. And uh, I do not think the Jonathan has done his best, and they have learned a lesson in a very hard way. And for the past president, President Buhari, to play politics with the oil subsidy is very upsetting. He said recently, that if he had removed oil subsidy, APC could have lost the election. So he was playing politics with it, not in the interest of Nigerians. I think uh, the question of apologizing to, to President Jonathan does not arise because we were all involved in that politics. But they have seen things for themselves that more today people will be buying well, above 600 naira, it's unimaginable. You can imagine young people going to work, some receiving 30,000 naira a month, and transport alone is not consuming whatever they earn. No, they have no more money to pay rent, to eat, to send their children to school. And I think that it is very, very urgent. Let's remove politics from it. That the president has to pay attention to the issue of providing, um, providing for the people who are suffering under this uh, removal of oil subsidy. Even though people believe it does not exist, but they have that perception that they were gaining something from the oil subsidy. That is the problem. So I think uh, the issue of, um, as I said, apologizing uh, to President Jonathan does not arise. 
Thank you.